Hello and uh, welcome to episode 83 of Jaga Vision. Um, I'm your host Jared Nyberg. I'm co-owner of Jaga Silk here in Victoria, BC. Um, you can check out our episodes on our YouTube channel archived, uh, 82 of them preceding this one. So uh, always a joy to keep that, 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 this uh, process going. Um, you can uh, check out um, some of our talks with some farmers live from Origin. We have some really amazing industry folks that join us every week. Um, we've been having a really good time. Uh, just, uh, yeah, um, I guess uh, talking about all things tea. Um, and sometimes we're, we're discussing um, things that are not related to tea. Music, politics, all sorts of fun things. So, yeah, please tune in every week. Um, today, I uh, have uh, Sister Speak joining us um, in a little bit here. Um, we're going to be drinking some, um, some Sencha. Uh, Sencha is probably the most uh, widely uh, enjoyed um, the most widely enjoyed tea in Japan. Um, when you when you say tea, ocha in Japan, generally people are talking about sencha. And today um, we're going to be. Uh, it's a little bit of a celebration. I have um, actually just like an in insane amount of uh, single cultivar senchas that we are really excited to release. Um, we have uh, seven of them to be exact. Um, I wouldn't say seven different cultivars because uh, two of them are uh, currently so that they can encourage this. Uh, yeah, they could just encourage a, a certain level of consistency. I often, um, a lot of my wholesale customers are in the coffee industry, and they're going to be uh, doing something similar with their with their espresso. They'll be blending um, different origins and creating a particular profile. You see this in uh, the wine industry as well. Um, if there's a sort of a leading uh, sort of style that that, that, that they want um, to sort of be their showcase blend, uh, they're going to go for something fairly consistent from year to year. Um, so what uh, what's really exciting here is it's kind of like this the whole idea of single cultivar wine when you started to talk about Merlot, or Cabernet Sauvignon, instead of talking about origin. And in the past, it used to be in France all about, or in, in wine, you would just be, you would be talking a lot more about Burgundies and Beaujolais and um, Champagnes instead of the cultivars that the farmers were growing. So expanding the conversation to include the variety of the tea plant um, we really feel is uh, is worthwhile it, it, it opens up I think some opportunities for farmers as well because you can have the same farmer in this case uh, growing different cultivars and talking about it at origin again um, the Takakis are selling their teas uh, by a price point so they'll be like hey this is the 2,000 yen this is the 5,000 yen this is the you know and it's 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 uh, that's the way they discuss it, and they're trying to build a flavor profile that can support the price that they've attached to it. Um, and this is a sensory uh, choice. This is um, an experienced choice uh, where they're gonna where they're gonna find the right selections to fit a profile that's gonna demand those particular prices. So um, when you are drinking the single cultivar versions, bear in mind that there's gonna be flavor holes. So we're gonna be. Um, I'm, I'm thinking of doing. Um, this Tsuyu Hikari, because uh, last week uh, we did a Tencha Tsuyu Hikari from Takaki, a different lot, um, but the same cultivar, and we toasted it up in our tea roaster, and we milled it live with uh, Sam Jones from 2% Jazz. We had a really good time, um, so I figured it would be a good idea to, uh, why not just work with that cultivar today um, and start the conversation. Um, so, I'm going to make this tsuyu hikari and the way that I really like to do it is definitely the way that Takaki-san has encouraged that we do it and that is fairly strong brew um, you're gonna find that um, he, he's he's all about these five gram brews with uh, just 90 mils of water. So very little water. So I'm just gonna preheat 
my teapot here. And I'm going to drop in, again, I'm, I'm, I'm dropping in five grams of Sencha. Just so you can get an idea of what these leaves look like, I'll put some on a little plate here too. Just give me one sec. So that is the tea leaves, the tsuhikari. What we notice with a lot of um, takaki selections is they're a little bit more broken up than you would expect um, from a farmer that's doing some some really nice quality. Um, it seems that he, he does focus a lot more on Um, so what he what he does is he he focuses a little bit more on uh, the the length of the leaf during harvest because because this is not a hand picked selection and so there's definitely a romanticism of hand picking tea and there's a reality to the fact that you're just going to be a lot more careful uh, potentially when you're hand picking but there's also uh, the economics of the enterprise which is uh, when you are hand picking. Um, you do make more if you can harvest uh, more quicker. Um, carefulness is definitely prized. Um, what's interesting about harvesting the way that Takaki is harvesting with the equipment um, is he can he can adjust to the millimeter how much he's going to clip off the top, and uh, he's learned through experience just um, that taking a little bit too much is going to make for too uh, astringent of a finished product, and taking just uh, the right amount is going to have a nice balance of um, astringency and you know just a, a, a beautiful a beautiful uh, inherent sweetness. So I'm going to do this uh, for a minute and 15 seconds. So nice thing about these timers is definitely the count up function. So I'm going to count up. I'm going to do 90 grams. Seventy degrees centigrade. In the winter time, I do like to um, preheat my decanter when I'm working with seventy degrees centigrade extractions. Anything hotter, I generally don't go for it. I just find that um, it makes it a much nicer drinking temperature if I keep my decanter at room temp. Um, going to uh, I'm going to drink out of a glass cup today. I just want you to see this emerald green color. It's, it's, it's quite lovely um, when it's, uh, yeah, when, it, when you get a chance to see that color. Oh, it smells like raspberries. That's been kind of been the theme this year is this really beautiful sweet berry, like a red berry smell that we've been getting out of a lot of um, these selections. So yeah. Um, when you get to a minute and 15, which is where I'm at now, you want to take a little kyusu that you've made it in, ideally, and you're going to empty it out. Um, the golden drop, really important. Get that last little bit. And uh, it's looking really beautiful from here. I have uh, the lighting system set up for a little bit better uh, visuals today. and. You can't really see it from your end, but my goodness, from my end, I can see the lovely tendrils of steam coming out and the glowing, literally glowing drops of liquid pouring in. So the idea is that you don't want to swirl your teapot. Um, you don't want to, um, yeah, you don't want to swirl your teapot. Um, you don't want to kind of shake it aggressively, but takaki son does shake his teapot fairly aggressively. He doesn't. He doesn't swirl it, but at the end there, he does power it through pretty good. So the tea school folks would, would frown upon that technique, but some of the best tea I've had has been made by Takaki san, so I think uh, something to it. Maybe it uh, just makes it a little bit more of a, an intense flavor. So again, really nice emerald green color, pretty stoked. Let's see if that ar aromatic comes through. Yeah, there's more of a, a cook. 
vegetable. Almost a spiciness to it now. Mm. That is fantastic. Mm. Yeah, I'm getting um, some really nice violet uh, cooked sugar. Um, you can really taste uh, his, his extremely, um, uh, I think, excellent work in, uh, in processing these leaves. You get a, a very soft astringency in the finish. You get this almost like you're biting into a, an, all, uh, an artichoke, like one of those uh, fresh artichokes that steamed and then dipped into olive oil with a little bit of salt. It, it really reminds me of that. Mm. Fantastic. So yeah, definitely you need to try the Senchetsu Hikari. Um, I, I did a little bit of research um, on this particular um, uh, cultivar for releasing the the seven selections side by side. I thought it'd be interesting to talk a little bit about the lineage. Um, Shizuka 7132 and Asatsuyu are the cultivars that were, were um, uh, basically hybrid to create this Tsuyukari in a nursery in Japan. Um, they uh, really focus on how these cultivars compare to Yabukita. Um, Yabukita is kind of the main cultivar that we're studying tea roasting with um, because of its very uh, neutral nature, the fact that it's kind of like considered the foundation of the Japanese tea industry. The, everybody grows Yabukita and something else. Um, however, Tsuyuhikari, you do see um, in Shizuoka, uh, the biggest producer of tea by volume in the country is up near Tokyo um, and it is uh, definitely a big big um, grower the region is a big grower of this particular cultivar cup smells gorgeous oh, like cotton candy <laughs> very very nice yeah, so I'm going to just do a, a comparison of this uh, particular tea um, next to, um, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to actually brew up some, some tsuyu, no, I just did tsuyu kari, so I wanted to do okuyutaka, so that's the one I'm going to do next. So okuyutaka is a blend of um, yutaka midori and F1NN8, they say. Um, and it's not grown as widely as some of the other, uh, uh, as tsuyu kari by any any margin, um, but um, it's fruity characteristics, this kind of chocolate nose that gives depth of tea. You, you do see it in a number of really um, well thought out uh, blends. So it's, it's always, again, fun to have that on its own so you can understand why people who are blending blend them together and also just to uh, enjoy them in their own right. So already the visual on these leaves are, are noticeably more intact. I would imagine that's going to be a number of things. Maybe um, Takapisan has has harvested them uh, when they were a little bit denser. The cultivar itself might be a more denser cultivar and less prone to breakage. Uh, but definitely, if I was going to compare this to the Tsuyukari that we just had, um, it's noticeably more intact. The, um, the leaves aren't as glossy. And I'm starting to feel that that glossiness it might be uh, connected somewhat to the 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 tea roaster temperature. Definitely a softer smell. Um, when I was smelling the uh, tsu hikari, I felt like I was getting a little bit more of those caramelized nutty fragrances. So okay, so I've I've just I've just done five grams. So again. That's what it looks like. Hopefully you can see that okay. Really, really well put together. Okay, so I'm gonna preheat my teapot. I'm, I'm a big believer, as much as I'm not super um, stoked about heating my decanter per se, I always preheat my brewing vessel whenever I remember. I think that uh, it does make a difference. Um, and I think uh, it's even more important when it's a little bit 
cooler out. And I love to smell it in a preheated pot too. You get a lot more of that dry aroma. For some reason in cupping, when we talk about smell, um, we often refer to the, the dry smell as a dry aroma and the extracted smell, or like after you've put hot water on it, smell as a wet fragrance. Okay. I think just to differentiate between the two, because they are quite different. Brewing up some sencha. Already messing it up. Yes, I did. It's totally cheating. Perhaps I just need to start again. Yeah, so what I did just now is I, um, I went into autopilot and I, um, I brewed with 180 grams of water, as that's definitely what I normally brew in in these teapots. But I'm, again, I'm trying to do a side-by-side -side using methodologies, um, brewing methodologies that the farmer likes to use. And I do really enjoy this style this five grams of tea, 90 mils of water. It's quite strong, it's not for the faint of heart. I think that it's a lot more easy to enjoy, easier to enjoy um, if you make it the more uh, technically standard style of brewing sencha according to the Kyoto Tea School, which is in the middle of Japan, whereas this is from the south. So it'd be interesting to check in on whether or not Takaki's kind of doing his own thing or if uh, or if South has a different brewing parameter standard than Central Japan. Again, 90 grams of water, 70 degrees C. We're gonna do it for a minute and 15 seconds over five grams of tea. So, see how this, how this goes. But it was smelling a lot lighter. The leaf appearance was a little bit less glossy. Um, I was uh, getting some some really interesting uh, fresh cut grass, uh, less toasty aromatics, more floral. So this reminds me more of a, of a, in the world of sencha, lighter roast. So I'd be interested to know um, Takaki's parameters on this because I would assume that from the aromatics and the visual that we're dealing with a tea, it wasn't toasted as uh, deep. one we just have, the Oku, uh, the Tsuyuka. So just having the Okuyutaka now. Let's see how this uh, pans out. Okay. Nice visual, a lighter green. Aromatics are softer. It's hard to explain. That's a very good tea. Um, it doesn't have that steamed artichoke kind of flavor. Instead, it's more like a, a like a brassica. Um, maybe more like in the world of um, mm, root vegetable. I wonder if this is the one that we talked about a bunch of root vegetables on. Kind of tastes like that. Um, no, we said black cherry, butter, cinnamon. Okay, so that's the two. Okay, oh, good time. That's what we're doing. Peach, chocolate, and white bean. Okay, yeah, the white bean. Yeah, I can go with that. Yeah, I would say that it's more like a, less like an artichoke and more like a white bean. That, that, that would uh, work. And then, yeah, there's this fruity smell and flavor that is reminiscent of a peach. But there's definitely a, a, like a very noticeably fragrant uh, floral dynamic to the flavor. I'm going to go with like a like violet. I often associate this really intense perfume-like floral aromatic with, with, with violet. Mm. Very nice. 
Okay. So, uh, I'm viewership from the Okanagan. Peace. Hello. Um, yeah, so <clears throat> I think that if you were going to, it is interesting that we, yeah, different scents in our teas. You know, if you, if you, if you do the, 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 the side by side, I think that's where it's most fascinating. I think if you were to drink the Okayutaka um, on its own, and then a few days later have the Tsuyukari on its own, they would both just taste like good sencha. It'd taste fresh. You wouldn't have, you know, like uh, if you're trying to assess a sencha and whether or not it's it, it's quality or not, um, you're definitely gonna you're gonna note that when it yeah when it when it smells like old hay, it's oxidized, and that's definitely an issue. And uh, expiry dates on tea in general are not. Uh, generally set based off of harvest dates. They're more based off of data received. And this can, of course, change um, uh, the expiry date of a tea based off of yeah when a company brought it in, not necessarily because of that relationship with the farm and understanding production times. And, and, and then if it's not stored correctly, um, you, you get storage abuse. You know in chocolate, when you store chocolate badly, you, it loses its glossiness. It's kind of like this melts and then reforms. It's got this really um, unfortunate appearance. With, with tea, um, yeah, you do get a little bit of a, a, a challenging smell. It does smell like old hay. It's kind of brownish gray. Looks like uh, Sister Speak has joined the call. Okay, hello, Sherry Ann. How's it going? It's Cohen. How are you doing? I'm good. I um, I have some Singer's Delight mixed with Sencha for the occasion today. Oh, nice. Okay, very cool. Yeah, we, we can't quite see you. Is your uh, is your camera off today? Or are we? Yeah, I was just wanting to say hi, but I'm gonna be able to uh, in just a second turn my camera. Oh, amazing! Okay, cool. Yeah, well, well, you know, uh, definitely uh, welcome to the show. I've been drinking some some Okuyutaka and some um, and some oh, some Tsuhikari from our Sencha selections, and I think uh, yeah, it's been really good. I've been talking about these. We actually have seven senches that we're doing, or, or actually technically five senches and two arachas um, that we're releasing in our reserve uh, tea, tea line that's up on our webpage right now, and it was it was quite a wow. yeah it was quite a, an interesting process of going through the different uh, cultivars and understanding a little bit more of their lineage and researching that a bit for this 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 release, and yeah we really. Um, Oh, hold on one moment, please. I'll be right back. Sharon, if you want to stay on. Okay, um, so looks like I've lost my guest. Um, I'm gonna try and uh, see if I can't um, get her back on. Um, it's been quite an interesting technical, technically challenging day. <laughs> Let's see if we can't make this happen. Okay, 
we'll just hope for the best. So, okay. Um, if uh, she does come back on, then we'll be able to drink some um, sencha together. So the the I, if I was going to choose between these two, I think I have a preference for the nuttier one, the the tsukari. But something tells me that the more that I was to drink sencha, um, the more that uh, I was like if I was in this multi-decade enjoyment of it, the more I would lean towards an appreciation of these lighter. Um, more more floral uh, and aromatic teas. I'm definitely in a place in my life where I, I want to experiment with uh, a little bit more flavor development through the tea roaster. Um, but again, yeah, I'm really understanding. I think this is that there's two worlds for sure, and it'll be interesting to see how it develops. Okay, <coughs> so. Um, I think what I'm going to try next is this um, this sencha sai midori. So um, give me a moment while I quickly empty the tea. I don't even be able to do it right here. I'm going to be making a sai midori. So whenever we're talking about sai midori um, uh, at Jaga Silk, we're generally talking about a tencha. This was actually the first time that I had a sai midori as a uh, as a sencha. So I'm I'm stoked about that. And so just for those watching that are maybe new to uh, these processes, um, it's uh, it's uh, tencha is essentially the botanical that's used for for um, for making matcha, whereas um, your sencha is the loose tea that you see referred to as just tea in Japan. So let's go for sai midori. Where are you? Right there. Okay. And I should probably get these back in. So okuyutaka, don't lose my place. <clears throat> get that tsuyu hikari in there. And I'm going to drink some sai midori. So yeah, there's a little bit more uh, opportunity here to taste, I think, a more, well, this is actually quite an expensive tea. So if we're going to go in um, in order of what I paid for them, um, definitely the Siamese tea is a little bit more of an expensive one. doesn't necessarily translate to a better flavor. Um, it's generally a supply and demand thing. Um, it's just harder to make. But the flip side of that coin is why would a farmer grow a cultivar that produces less if it doesn't taste good? So I think that the goal here is definitely if I'm going to grow this tea, it's going to cost me more to grow, it better be worth it. And I think that Siamidori has proved itself. Um, but again, um, it's mostly been, in our experience, uh, utilized for tencha. Um, I've had um, a really interesting sabidori, um, sencha, single cultivar from, from Shizuoka in the past, but this was my first experience having a single cultivar. What did I do there? That is a sencha, okay. Hmm. Well, interesting. I guess I, yeah, okay, good. I think I said auto chop for a second. <laughs> so I put in five grams again. I'm gonna do the 70 degree system. I'm stoked to do it. Um, we're gonna try this at a minute and 15 seconds. I'll get you a visual on the leaves in just a second here. 
I'm not going to mess this one up. It's going to be 90 grams. I won't have to remake that, thank goodness. Get myself a different decanter. Cup. And off to the races. Okay. <clears throat> you probably want to see that. So let's, uh, yeah, let's analyze this. The Sencha Saimidori. These are the ones I've cupped over my left here. And you can see that these leaves, again, are a little bit more broken up, like the Tsiwikari was. So I'm going to assume either a uh, sort of not as dense of a leaf. Hard for you to see that, hey? Hopefully that's clear. It smells lighter than the tsuhikari in terms of that kind of roasty profile but uh yeah oh, looks like we have sherianne hello <laughs> sherianne hey awesome <laughs> you made it yeah <laughs> but you're, you're on I, uh, on the road hey yeah literally <laughs> <laughs> in cool. about a second Okay, well then let's. Uh, you know, I'm taking everybody through these seven different uh, senchas. Um, I know I sent I sent you a bunch of them. Um, why don't we uh, we brew the one that you that you have um, on the road there for this these moments? What what, what are you? Uh, did I suggest the sai akari or the sai midori? I can't remember. I actually have them all, and uh, I was gonna add it to. I have this big thermos of Stinger's Delight, so I'm gonna have to do a compilation today. <laughs> 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 That's hilarious. Okay, so um, we uh, your video turned off again, but I would love to see it. Um, I know. I don't know why. <laughs> no, that's great though. That's awesome. Okay, so why don't you try the? <laughs> Which one are you gonna blend? I uh, might, might as well, you know, do do the sencha yabukita in your blend there then. I think because that's yeah. the one there's the most of, and the other ones we can uh, we can enjoy slowly because there's very little of them. Um, I'm drinking the Sai Midori, um, uh, and if you were able to make it pure, it's, 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 it's quite, it's quite, uh, lovely smelling. And I have to tell everybody watching, I've been doing a minute and 15 seconds for these guys, but technically the standard that Mr. Takaki said was a minute and a half, so I've just managed to confuse myself by blending the minute and 15 that we normally do with, uh, with his standard. So, so you, it's, we can't see what you're doing, but maybe you can describe a little bit about what you mean by this co this compilation that, that, that you're putting Okay, so you can see, oh, you can see me now for a second. Okay, awesome. Um, right now, mm -hmm. I'm at a Mexican restaurant. Yes, you are, okay. I'm about to get some small vegetarian olives. Okay, okay. I'm gonna put the center in with the singer's delight in the big thermos. Once I get into the car, I'm not gonna be able to video on, so I'll be with you, but I'll be driving three and a half hours to LA traffic. Next oh, wow, time. okay, all right. Okay. Cause you're so on tour, life you're, life. you're, you're on tour right now. This is like, uh, and normally you do a show right before Jagavision. Uh, you do your back porch sessions, but you've had to put yeah, that on today, pause for a little bit too. Hey, cause of this hectic tour schedule. Yeah. So we had a radio interview today at 88.5 Los Angeles. Nice. I told them about UT. I've been telling all the stations about the teas. Oh, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Cool. So, yeah. so Jaga Silk was mentioned on 88.5 <laughs> by, by yeah, Sister Yeah, and I heard radio. On iHeartRadio. So, you know, uh, uh, people need to check it out. Um, how can they find the interview? Oh, uh, sisterspeakmusic.com or facebook.com. You have the links up there so they can check it out. Okay, very cool. Very, very cool. Yeah, for those watching uh, that don't know, um, uh, Jagger Silk has been um, sending um, Sister Speak uh, tea for 10 years, I guess, -ish, as a tea sponsor for her tours. Um, and also, uh, Sharon is my sister, but, uh, yeah, been, uh, pretty stoked to have that, uh, that, that, that moving, the team moving around the world. So, okay. Um, Slightly. <laughs> <laughs> sort of losing you, but there you are. Okay, cool. And you were just in Costa Rica too. Oh, I think we might've lost her. Okay. So, oh. it's no problem. Okay. Yes, yes. What was that? Sorry. Sorry. Mm. I missed that last piece. No, you were just in Costa Rica as well. Yes, I was, and I'm uh, learning a little bit of Spanish. Mm. Uh, buenos dias, como esta? Okay. Muy rico. I got a 
I got some tamales, and I'm hitting the road. I'm gonna show you. you want, how do you say tea? You in, how do you say how do you say tea in Spanish? Te. Te. Okay, that's like French. Te verde. Verde. Green tea. Te verde. Okay. You want the uh, the thermos? This is the thermos. This is the amazing thermos. It's like the size of my head. Okay. I've been drinking incredible amounts of Singer's Delight with it. Uh huh. Uh -huh. And I'm gonna add the sencha to it. But I do have to start driving now, so I'm not going to be on video. That's anymore. all good. That's all good. Okay. <laughs> but we have, you, we have you on audio, and, and you'll be drinking it, and and, and, and uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to know what, what it tastes like. Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, totally. It's, it's going to be great. I'm going to do it right now before I start driving. Well, I'm, I'm drinking the Siamidori right now, and my goodness, um, I, was, I was talking before you came on about how it costs me a lot more to bring in this particular selection. Uh, versus the Okuyotaka and the Tsuyukikari that I just drank. And you uh, you can definitely taste it. It's got um, a certain almost uh, chocolatey richness to it. Um, really beautiful texture. Um, the, the That's just what's blowing my mind here in this, with this particular one. You know, you'll be you'll be blending it with marshmallow root and raspberry leaf and, and honey bush. Which one, which one is you, are you doing? Uh, this is the Saimidori that I'm drinking right now, but you might want to do the Yabukita, the Yabukita by uh, Takaki. It's not part of the reserve tea line, um, but it is the what one that the, I'm practicing with. What about the Sai Akari? Sai Akari, yeah. Sai Akari is um, is a uh, actually the only one that I haven't had yet of these of these senchas. So I could make that right now. Well, you're you're throwing it in. Okay, I'm gonna do it. I've got it here. Do it. I've just got to do this like road style. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I got the thermos. I'm pouring it in. Yeah, you are. Right here, just yeah, a little bit. Just, you know, I'm mixing it. I gotta get some green tea and singer's delight for the road. You know, uh, in in Russia, um, there's a style of making tea. Um, the samovar is used widely, and and you'll often see people just do um, the same tea leaves uh, all day, and they're just adding to it, adding to the pot until it kind of gets full. And they're just brewing. That's what I'm doing right now. There you go, right? So you're sort of doing a, you're doing a, a samovar car style tea, blending your I'm single cultivar sencha with it. your herbal tea. <laughs> yeah, and I'm gonna sip it into this bottle. Okay. O outside the car door, there's just a glass bottle and a sip. Amazing, yeah. amazing. Okay. Right. You're not gonna be able to see it though. So sorry, I gotta put it on the ground to do that. All good. All good. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I'm gonna make it like I you know like I'm at a tea bar or something. Um, I can't wait to do that. It's it's gonna be great. Because yeah. you, you 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 make your way back to Canada at uh, one of these uh, points in the near future, right? Oh my so. God, I can't wait. I'm ready to just like mellow out for like the whole fall. Okay, so let's. Okay. So I'm gonna tell you my my ETA right now. If you even come to Los Angeles, it's like you. So I, instead of leaving, I, just within a span of 15 minutes, I needed to stop for food. Yeah. But uh, let's let's just see what what happened. So instead of leaving at 1:45, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. now I'm leaving at two. Okay. And this is how it rolls over here. So what what it, what is usually a two hour and 15 minute trip was just three hours and 15. Mm -hmm. And now with this little stop, yeah. we are looking at, let's see, what, like sorry, my phone. Probably 6 p.m., oh. right? I think so. I think it's going to be about four hours now instead of three, just with that 10-minute stop. Wow. Wow. That's... Oh, no, we're still at three and a half hours. Okay. You got this. You got this. You got to get get on the road. Get get driving. Turn off your video. <laughs> turn off my video. Okay. Okay. Lots of love, but I'm still here with you. Okay, amazing. All right, so while you're driving, I'm going to be uh, making some sayakari. So you're brewing the tea literally as you're driving, right? Yeah, I just put some in my jar, and I just had some to start. And then uh, when I stop, I'm gonna, my next stop is going to be drinking. Okay. I did like a super quick brew, though. A uh, super quick witch? Brew? I did a super super fast brew of like where I've already I'm already drinking it now. Oh, okay. Which I don't know if you can see I don't know everything. if you can see this, but uh, that's the the tea I'm, that we're drinking. These are a lot more carefully formed needles. It looks like uh, just a nicer quality tea. 
I don't know if it's more expensive. I have to look at my literature, but it looks like it probably is. Just very carefully put together. Um, I'm looking at um, less, well, no, there's a certain amount of gloss there. The smell reminds me a lot of the Saimidori in terms of the settings. So I would imagine this is a similar roast profile as the Saimidori. Sort of a little bit lighter, but not as light as the as the Okuyutaka that I had. But the Tsuyukari is definitely the most roasty of what I've had today. Uh, I really like it with the mix with the singer's delight because it's like a little bit of like a green tea, antioxidant kind of wake me up. Sweet. Okay. Yeah, I was I was I was pretty stoked because um, yeah, we're just having this. Uh, I keep on getting these interesting chat things that don't make any sense. Um, I go, <clears throat> so, um, we have some random people just talking about stuff that doesn't make sense in the chat room. I guess, I, I guess I'm getting spammed. <laughs> um, Why are you getting scraped? Sorry? Isn't that like when you've really made it in life is when you start getting spammed? <laughs> okay, well, <laughs> I think it's, I think it's, I think it's, uh, yeah, it's maybe when you, uh, have had the same, um, inbox for too long. Or the same phone number, <laughs> but maybe those are those are interconnected. Who knows? Um, what, what's what's kind of cool about these? I was explaining to everybody is 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 that it's kind of like in in wine when people when the conversation started to um, progress a little bit more than just talking about origin. Uh, talk like talking about origin is really important. Like when it was like just red wine and white wine, and they started talking about champagne and 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 Burgundy and and Beaujolais in France. That was really cool. Um, I wasn't alive when that started happening, but um, uh, what <laughs> what they started doing when they transport when they started planting um, vineyards uh, in in the states, etc., especially in the Napa Valley, they started talking about Merlot and Cabernet Sauvignon, um, and really uh, opening up the conversation to be more about the cultivar. I think that was double pronged rationale. I think one of it was like, hey, you know, if we focus too much on on you know, we don't want to call it a Burgundy if it's not grown in Burgundy, right? Yeah. So it was. It was. A, it, I think it was a quest for accuracy, and also to just say, hey, you know, like let's talk about terroir. Um, and so that's what's really cool about this is that this Sai Midori that we're drinking right now, or sorry, the Sai Akari that we're drinking right now, is a. Uh, it's a really. Um, it's it's a cultivar. It's a variety of the tea plant, and so it can they can grow this cultivar in uh, in different environments, and so to be able to taste it, grown in 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 you know takaki's farm versus growing it in kyoto etc is is interesting but even within the context of just the farm um one farm growing multiple cultivars being able to taste like this the sai akari next to the sai midori next to the tsuyu hikari next to the okuyutaka is really fascinating because you get to taste um what the cultivar brings to the table and i think in apples I think it's kind of a no-brainer that that a Granny Smith is going to taste really different from a Gala, right? You following? Me? Absolutely. Yeah. And so also, yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. I just wanted to just interject for a second and just mention yeah, yeah. that the vegetarian tamales are phenomenal and they pair very well with the Singer's Delight <laughs> Sencha blend. <laughs> you know, I I love how you bring everything back to earth. It's good. It's good. We got to be up in the clouds sometimes. <laughs> I got to remember. I got to remember how good, you know, tamales and uh, I haven't actually ever blended a single cultivar. Um, you know, like that's a $60 tea that you, you, you have there, right? So it's a, uh, it's a, uh, it's quite an expensive essentia. Um, and uh, I, it's, I used it's a that, no, no, it's awesome though. You know, I think it's nice to be able to go like, Hey, you know, these are like this like top end stuff, but like, doesn't mean we shouldn't have the the capacity to to, to play with them, you know, and and see what happens in these different in these different contexts. I love it. I think it's great. Um, <laughs> um, so I'm gonna have mine. Just a moment. Thirty more seconds. I'm excited. Um, the Sai Akari, by the way, share um, is where are we? I was looking up the roots of each one. Um, they, so they, they blended this one with the Saimi Dodi that we just had in the nursery and a cultivar called Z, Z1. So Z1 and Saimi Dodi were, were 
were crossed um, in a nursery, and they were able to produce Sai Akari. And this this is supposed to be the cultivar of the future. This tea that we're drinking right now is supposed to replace what's more widely grown right now, which is the 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 Yabukita cultivar. You see a lot of Yabukitas, right? I send you a lot of matcha Yabukita yeah. by so and so, right? And yep. that is the most widely grown cultivar in Japan. But they say that this one, the Sai Akari, is the cultivar of the future because over time, this is kind of interesting, is that cultivars get um, less pest resistant. So you'll actually see the environments change or adapt um, to be able to take down stronger cultivars. Um, and so you gotta, you got to constantly be um, experimenting with new types. Um, and and they, that's... That's why we well, develop, why we, yeah, why we move. We don't just keep the same cultivar growing forever and ever and ever. Amen. Kind of interesting, hey? So that's the extracted liquid. Less? Sorry? Sorry, you said they become less resistant to pests over time? Yeah, I almost like, I have this image in my head that a cultivar, um, which is propagated by taking cuttings and then planting them in the ground rather than by seed. If you planted the seed of a particular tea bush, you'd have a completely different flavor dynamic in the, the resulting off, offspring. So to, to, to have that genetic homogeneity, you really need to make sure that you are, um, yeah, that you, that you use the cutting. Interesting, eh? So then, yeah, so then if it's planted by seed, does it become also less pest resistant over time? Or does it yeah, more? but it might, it, but it, it would really depends. It's kind of a wild card, likely going to be stronger. But um, but uh, you may not have the same desirable qualities in terms of flavor and color, etc. Uh, um, they call that in Japan a zairaishu, is, is, is a, a, a kind of a wild, out of the nursery produced um, um, tea uh, variety. Yeah, and so this is this is this is uh, I have this image of cultivars and apples, um, etc., being like these immortals or these really long lived creatures, and we're just kind of artificially expanding or like extending their life force um by propagating them in this way but eventually nature catches up with them and they get to the point where they're they can't that immortal almost immortal life is not able to extend anymore and they just de and then they just decay really quickly regardless of you know the fact that they might be a new a new plant yeah Wow. Yeah, and in apples, I mean, it's brought up in the chat too. But like grafting apples, if you want to reproduce the same cultivar, um, you're going to graft to dwarf stock. So you're actually going to take, um, uh, you know, twigs or branches or whatever, um, and then you're going to graft it to some root stock um, to be able to produce genetic homogeneity. Like, so you could actually transform from the graft upwards a tree from, say, a gala to a Granny Smith, if that was your goal. So with, with tea though, it's it's about taking the cuttings that that, that, that sprout up from the top of the bush, uh, and clipping them, and then, then then planting them into the ground to, to reproduce that flavor and reproduce that cultivar. Oh. Uh, yeah. Well, that's really so, good. Super perfumey, kind of spicy. Mm, that's lovely. A little more roasty than the Siami Dori. So I was expecting it to be a lighter um, toastiness, but it's 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 got some some nuttiness to it. This is lovely. Yeah. Very good. That's wow. It. That's a lot of uh, powerful information there. Um, so if you were to grow your own essentia, mm -hmm. what would you look for in terms of soil and positioning of soil? Um, yeah, you know, it's a good question. Um, you really want to have a lot of uh, uh, drainage. You can't have... Um, you know, okay. they, they, you often grow uh, tea trees on hillsides um, for increasing the amount of sun that they're going to achieve throughout the year. Uh, you find they, they do really well in, um, in, say, like closer to the equator. Um, but just because a tea plant does really well doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to produce really good tea. Um, if, a, if, a, if a tea plant grows too aggressively well, then it will uh, grow multiple um, flushes. And you can harvest all year, but but you're not going to have the same quality um, as you would uh, uh, a, from a tea plant that has a little bit of a harder time growing. And that's why you find high, higher elevation um, higher, higher elevation teas uh, do, uh, do taste better because they're having a harder time growing. 
So, if we were to grow tea in the Chosen, for instance, in would Canada? that work yeah. without, without it being a high elevation? Oh, 100 percent. Yeah, because Japan is considered outside of what's supposed to be okay for growing tea. Um, and uh, they've proven beyond a doubt that as long as you get a little creative, um, you can produce some amazing tea. Um, uh, tea grows in Siberia, and if tea can grow in Siberia, you can basically grow it most anywhere. <laughs> Uh, they have little yeah, plantations yeah. even in Scotland. Um, but yeah, it does really well and it's a lot easier to grow in warmer climates, for sure. Um, but it uh, doesn't mean you can't grow it in uh, climates that are less hospitable. And you might even find that through trial and error there's going to be some nicer... We're actually going to have a guest on our show, um, hopefully um, in the new year, uh, if not if not sooner, we'll see, um, uh, from uh, Westholm. And their uh, tea garden that I think you and I were able to visit a number of years ago uh, here on the island. So we know for a fact that, that the tea plant can do well on, on Vancouver Island. Cool. Yeah. Um, I love going to that tea farm. Yeah, um, your birthday. Yeah, people should go check it out. Um, you know, I've, uh, I, we're actually getting to the end of the show here. Um, but uh, do you have any more shows coming up? You want to tell people watching about uh, your if you have anything um, on the agenda here that they can tune into, or stuff that you've uh, just done that, that you want to suggest that they check out? Yeah, uh, everything's on our website. Um, we have I don't know if anybody's in California that's watching, but we're doing four shows in four days. Amazing. Two in San Diego. Yeah, two San Diego, one Sacramento, one in Los Angeles with the full band and the trio, uh, depending on the night. And then patreon.com slash sisterspeak starting up on the 16th again, December. So, and I'll also be back. I'll be able to hang out with you as well that day. Amazing. Maybe we could have a, uh, an in-studio session because you'll be in Victoria. Oh, that would be fun. I'd love to. Oh, although I'm kind of being extra careful because I'm just coming back from tour. <laughs> yes. So we should probably wait on uh, negative tests and all that fun stuff. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll have a negative test to be able to get in. And then also, like, when immediately when I get in, you have to have one before and then one at the airport. Awesome. And for those watching, Sister Speak uh, does um, work with us on also uh, uh, setting up the music sessions we have out in the courtyard. So those will be starting up in March. So stay tuned. Ooh, I can't for wait. Stay tuned for details. Check out sisterspeakmusic.com and go to patreon.com slash sisterspeak to uh, lend her your support. Some really great sounds, some really great lyrics, um, and uh, a new album on the horizon, um, probably at some point in 2022. Um, April 22, uh, we, we decided April 2022, this is a release. Okay, April 2022. It's an amazing album. I've had the, the, the good fortune of being able to listen to a few of the, the tracks. Um, um, I'm really excited for it. Uh, it's, it's, it's every, every time you make a new album, it's always such a joy and, and you do such great work. So really uh, excited for you. Thank you. And I got to say, I was driving yesterday and I was like thinking about it. People are like, oh, how do you manage a crazy schedule? And I was like, you know what? Partly the tea. <laughs> like, makes... Honestly. Okay. That, that, like, that powers yeah, the, the first... craziness. <laughs> Yeah, the first thing I do before like flying now is I make a big, huge pot of Singer's Delight so that my throat's coated and doesn't get too dry. Nice. And then I've got matcha, I've got some sencha. Um, you know, I do. I, I buy kombucha sometimes. So, like the tea is like obviously love is the other piece. Got to sure. have love in life. Yeah, yeah. Um, and like be passionate about what you're doing and positive people around. Um, that's extremely important. And also like seriously though, like this tea is like you might as well call it like a musical instrument at this point it's so helpful well thank you you, you can go on to uh jagasilk.com those watching and get singer's delight which uh Sharon is exclaiming about and if you want to copy what she's doing grab some siamese dodi and throw a teaspoon in with your brew and see uh see if uh, she's onto something <laughs> okay <laughs> <laughs> well thank you so much for joining us today Sharon. i'm uh looking forward to seeing you next week and having you on the show again um at, uh, on jagavision thanks so much Thank you. All right. You take care. Goodbye. Peace and love. Bye. Peace and love. Okay. So that was uh, that was Sherry Ann from Sister Speak joining us from the road. Um, she's got a couple shows ahead of her, and she's doing a really great job. I really encourage you to go and check out what she's up to. And, uh, yeah, we'll catch you same time next week. Um, and uh, I'll, we'll be, uh, yeah, 1 p.m. Jagavision. Take care.